This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Good afternoon. This is Ray Tuchiyama in a special edition of Think Tech Asia with my guest, Ichiro Sekimitsu. And he's going to be talking about his career and topics in global finance today. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much for having me, Ray. It's a pleasure. Well, let's start from the beginning here. And I know you've done a lot in the global finance industry. And uh, so the most recently, where were you? Um, before moving to Hawaii, I was uh, in Tokyo for about 14 years, a, a very short stint in New York, but um, I've been here now for two years. And you were CEO of Asia Pacific Rates and Currencies at what bank? Uh, bank of America, Merrill Lynch. Okay, and, and before you were based in Hong Kong, uh, what was. were you doing there? Um, I was also at, in Hong Kong, I was the head of trading for uh, interest rates and uh, actually um, corporate bonds as well. And those are very arcane topics for our viewers, which we will go back sure. <laughs> later in the show. And you also worked in uh, my favorite city, London, for a while. I How did. many years there? Ten years in London. Yeah. And uh, what were you doing and uh, for what bank? Again, it was, uh, it was Bank of America Merrill Lynch, but um, it was bef you know, all these banks got together. I was working for a bank called Continental Illinois, oh. um, and uh, Bank of America bought them. So um, a combination of, of those, but all doing the same thing pretty much uh, interest rate and currency derivatives. Okay, we'll, we'll go back to that. And uh, you have an MBA from a business school in Switzerland. Yes. Which, which one? It's called uh, IMD. Um, it was, it was uh, called IMD when I was there. Um, but yeah, in Lausanne, Switzerland. And, uh, and the courses and programs are in English? They're all in English, uh, pretty much the case method, Harvard case method. Okay. Yeah. And, and where did you get your bachelor's? Uh, in Claremont, California, Harvey Mudd College. Okay. And in what field? Uh, engineering. So, w so we go back to the beginning and we'll kind of uh, uh, wend our way to the, to the uh, current times now. And first, uh, where were you born and raised? I was actually born in Kyoto, Japan. Okay. I'm, uh, I'm Japanese um, and uh, grew up in uh, Kobe, right. in Japan. And now, when you say you're Japanese, yeah. your parents, uh, when they had you and your grandparents, they were all Japanese citizens, right? I mean, uh, yes, that's right. And they spoke only? Uh, well, Japanese, right. but um, you know, they, they did speak in, uh, oh. some, some English, okay. um, yes. And, and did they ever uh, live abroad, uh, your parents? Well, yes, that's why, um, actually, um, I was uh, born in Kyoto, but I moved to um, uh, the United States when I was one, oh. and then moved back when I was seven. Right. So right, those right. were t days, uh, you know, and my, my parents were obviously right. with me. <laughs> And so we were in uh, Evanston, Illinois. Oh, wow. Yeah. And, and the words Kikoko Shijo will yeah. uh, apply to you, somebody who was uh, uh, returned to Japan after some education in the United States. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, uh, I, I went back with very little um, Japanese right. as a Kikoko Shijo, and uh, my parents had to make a decision. Do we put him back a year and put him into the Japanese system, or do we put him into the international school system? And they made the choice of uh, putting me into an international school, um, and I guess that changed my life. <laughs> it, that, that's in Kobe. Which one it's was a, that? Uh, it's called Canadian Academy. Right. And, and when I hear Canadian, it was uh, established by Canadians? Yes, indeed. A uh, hundred years ago, uh, let's see, a little over a hundred years ago by Canadian missionaries. Oh, wow. yes. And so uh, what kind of city is Kobe? I mean, it's <laughs> in the Kansai uh, region of Japan. Yeah. And so there's Kyoto, there's Osaka <laughs> and Kobe, each with a distinct culture, I guess. What, what would you characterize uh, the Kobe culture? Well, I think, um, let me, you know, it's big cities. Um, Tokyo would be sort of like uh, Honolulu, right. and then Osaka right. would be the second city. I don't know, Ray, what, what would be the second city of... Uh, <laughs> right, it's Hilo, actually. Is it Hilo? Yeah, Hilo oh, okay. is the second largest uh, okay. city in, in, um, in the state, and they're very proud of that. Oh, yeah. good. But uh, you make an analogy, say, Chicago to New York City. Yes, okay. Chicago and, to New York City, and then, but then Kobe, uh, Tokyo, uh, Chicago to New York would be... Kobe and uh, and uh, or uh, Osaka and right. Tokyo. Kobe, 
is part of Osaka, <laughs> close to Osaka. Mm -hmm. So uh, when you first entered banking, which bank was that? When you first started a career, what, what was that? It was what called was the Continental Illinois oh. National Bank. And so were you in Illinois? Uh, I, I, I was, Chicago. Okay. So you were in the Midwest, yep. uh, which is a very distinct culture in itself uh, uh, compared to San Francisco and uh, New York City. How would you characterize the Chicago culture? Oh, it's the, I, I would say it is America. <laughs> no, I, it, but seriously, you know, you've, yeah. got the, you've got the West Coast right. and the East Coast, and Chicago was very, you know, Midwestern, yeah. good values. Yeah. Uh, I liked it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and, and so... Um, uh, in your career, uh, you said that you were doing mostly the same thing, right? Uh, mm -hmm. What was that? What was that um, uh, area that you specialized in? Um, pretty much interest rates and, and currencies. Okay. Um, most people, when they think about financial markets, think of stocks. Right. They're very, you know, that, 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 that's very clear to them. But many people aren't very, that clear with interest rates and currencies, but that's what I, 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 I did. Um, uh, this was a time when there was a lot of innovation going on, so we uh, we started doing these things called derivatives. Oh yeah, that's um, a swaps, right. options, oh, things yeah. like that, and that's what I was involved with uh, for my career. And that's a really mysterious area for non-financial uh, people in the street. Um, I guess I yeah. guess you're right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I think you're right. Now, when you talk about uh, let's uh, uh, separate interest rates and currencies. Yeah. When I when you talk about currencies, we talk about the yen, dollar, you know, uh, the euro, uh, mm -hmm. many many currencies in the world. Am I correct? Yes, we. So, yeah. what's uh, how do you make money? off of currencies? Uh, really from movement um, and um, there's things called a mark being a market maker so you know people need to buy and they need to sell so there's a selling price and a, and a buying price and uh, the market maker usually tries to make money from you know um, having a spread between those mm -hmm. um, but also um, people can make take speculative positions um, and hopefully they're right if they're wrong, they lose money instead of uh, making money. But uh, it's fairly simple. Now, interest rates uh, yeah. aren't they kind of set by the mm. uh, you know federal mm. bank or the uh, central banks the central of each bank. uh, each country, uh, more or less? Or uh, you know mm. that people uh, can't decide on interest rates by themselves? Am I correct? That's very true, Ray. For um, but there's thing there's a thing called the yield curve. And the yield curve is that there's, uh, you know, there's very short-term rates, and then there might be 10-year rates, 30-year rates, right. and the very short-term rates are are uh, uh, pretty much regulated by the by the by the central bank, right. but they don't have that, that much control over the longer end, right. and that's pretty much supply and demand between buyers and sellers. Right. So when you say supply, uh, buyers and sellers, who are the um, uh, buyers and who are the sellers uh, in, in this uh, area of interest rates? Well, really, anybody that needs, it's an investor who needs to buy, let's say, uh, bonds. Right. Bonds are pretty much the, the sort of benchmark for interest rates across the, the yield curve. And so they'll move based on, you know, somebody having to buy something might bring the price up and somebody needing to sell it might, might bring the price down. So that would create movement. Now, uh, is it true that when uh, bonds go low, stocks go high, or <laughs> and vice versa? That's, uh, again, sometimes, <laughs> but sometimes not. Okay. There's so many things that, uh, that, that, you know, in general, because uh, when, when, stocks, when, when bonds are low and interest rates are very high, then people, that, that, that can be attractive. So people might say, I'd rather, you know, have that okay. than that stock. So you're, ta you're getting into an area where every day there are uh, decisions made yeah. by people with money. What do you do with, say, $1,000? Yeah. Do you keep it in cash? Do you keep it in gold? Mm -hmm. Do you buy stocks? Do you buy a bond? Do you uh, uh, invest in, in, in something else, antiques? Uh, you're, you're talking about uh, how to uh, um, you know, make uh, money grow in some way or be stable. Mm -hmm. is, is that... Uh, the world of uh, what you just talked about, currencies and interest rates, would that be in that world? I would think so, yes. It's, uh, I guess, what we call asset classes. Everything that you've mentioned is an asset class. So if you've got some money, then you know, you'll invest, and hopefully you're, gonna, you're going to pick the ones that you think are going to be stable and uh, grow. 
So we come to uh, uh, your uh, uh, move to Hawaii, yeah. to Honolulu. You had never lived here before, am I correct? That's uh, correct. And you've been here how many years? Um, two years. Yeah. Um, but again, I do have a, a, um, a connection with Hawaii right. uh, where my father oh. um, was one of the first Japanese after the war to actually um, to be allowed to study in the United oh. States. Uh, he was from the Yamaguchi Prefecture, right. and there's a lot of Yamaguchi people here right, in exactly. Hawaii. Yeah. And so he came, looked, uh, uh, looked for, very, you know, for, um, uh, you know, for distant relatives, right. and they helped him out. Oh. And uh, so I've got, I, ha I do have a connection to Hawaii. Oh, so how long was he here? Uh, he was well. He was here just enough to make enough money. He worked in the fields, oh, taught judo, oh, wow. and then he went off to the mainland for the to study. So, so there is a kind of a family connection. You're right. Mm -hmm. You're right. Yes. So uh, you've come back to a place where you enjoy it. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I like Hawaii. <laughs> so uh, and and so you're here, and and now you've um, kind of uh, seen what Hawaii is about, mm -hmm. and uh, and I know that you've been talking uh, and making presentations on on finance, and uh, so what is uh, your your topic that you've been uh, presenting to uh, people here in Hawaii? Essentially, I call it the financial shock and awe, but that's just a that that's just a catchy you know um, phrase. But um, I pretty much present my career of managing financial risk um, over many years in, 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 in various centers and just sh kind of showing what are the characteristics of a financial shock. And, we're, you know? and we will go deeper into okay. that <laughs> after our break for Think Tech Asia. Thank you very much. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. Think Tech Hawaii, which streams live on thinktechhawaii.com, uploads to YouTube, and broadcasts on cable OC16 and Alelo 54. Great content for Hawaii from Think Tech. We all play a role in keeping our community safe. Every day, we move in and out of each other's busy lives. It's easy to take for granted all the little moments that make up our every day. Some are good, others not so much. But that's life. It's when something doesn't seem quite right that it's time to pay attention. Because only you know what's not supposed to be in your every day. So protect your every day. If you see something suspicious, say something to local authorities. Welcome back in this really warm afternoon in Honolulu, Hawaii. We're talking on Think Tech Asia to Ichiro Sakimitsu about his career in finance. And just before the break, he was focusing on his career and about this very uh, exciting topic on, on finance. And I'll let you uh, kind of uh, uh, really summarize it for us. And then you can tell us uh, about, you know, about why uh, talking to people in Hawaii. Yeah. Sure. Well, again, um, I initially started putting this presentation together because I really want, for me, I wanted to kind of summarize my career and try to get lessons. Um, when I was in the markets, um, I just didn't have time to think. And this gave me time to put it all together. Um, and I wanted to talk about financial shocks okay. and how, you know, how, how they come about, right. what, are, what, is, what is the anatomy okay. of a financial shock, and how has it changed. And particularly in Hawaii, um, you, you know, I thought it would be, uh, it would be helpful right. to, because Hawaii is an island state. Right. Oh, yes. I came from an island nation, yeah. Japan. I worked in another island nation, yeah. um, the UK. Right. Um, and they have this thing, something in Japanese that we call shimaguni konjo, right, right. as you're well aware, the island mentality. Mentality, right. And so, you know. Sometimes you, you, good, sometimes bad. Sometimes <laughs> good, sometimes bad. But it, it, you tend to be sort of insular. Right, right? okay. And you, you, have, you have, you know, water borders. And so you think, you know, and you try to, you, you, you're happy with the quality, you're, you're happy with what you have, and you don't want things to change sometimes. And I found that, you know, similar things in Hawaii. And my point was that as, as I looked back over the last 30 years, the interconnections, oh. not just financial, right. but technological, the interconnections have just grown so much that people in Hawaii are connected, right. whether you like it or not. Well, we are, yes. And We're so right. I was trying to just, you know, on the, from a financial perspective, say, well, you know, have a thought. 
have a thought because all these things going around around the world affect you and me. We live here. Well, one of the biggest uh, uh, actions that happened in the early 80s, the Plaza Accords, <laughs> that suddenly uh, lowered the uh, value of the US dollar vis-a-vis -vis the yen. And all of a sudden, that uh, had a uh, cause and effect of tourists coming to Hawaii, and of course, seeing the yen currency so much uh, uh, more value to acquire assets in Hawaii, uh, uh, real estate companies, and, and of course, omiyage, uh, you know, presence and so forth. And that had an action, and that was a Plaza Accords done in New York <laughs> between US and Japanese kind of uh, ministries getting together. Yes, and it was actually a global thing too, Ray. It wasn't just, just Japanese, but it's the Europeans. Everybody came together and said the dollar is too weak, so mm -hmm. it needs to appreciate. And um, so that the, the yen appreciated, three, 360 yen, right. as you recall, it's almost yeah. fixed to, uh, to, a much, uh, to a much stronger uh, a level. And uh, yeah, that, that, would, that kind of thing very much affects the trade between countries. Now, um, right now we have tremendous global trade happening china japan uh, us and uh, but uh, as you know hawaii is not a trading state uh, uh, in many ways uh, we attract people to come and spend money and that's how the economy is driven uh, does trade also have an impact to uh, to our lives in hawaii absolutely i mean right uh, again it, it depends on the terms of trade uh, as you say Hawaii doesn't really manufacture too right. much. Um, it's very dependent on, I guess, um, the real estate investment, uh, tourism, um, things like that. So, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a special set of circumstances. Uh, but in general, global trade has been, you know, has been uh, increasing right. for many yes. years, yes. you know. Um, but the, th the, the thing is, um, it, it's actually stopped increasing in some ways, oh. be, right? Because, uh, well, you see the various uh, the political elections, etc., uh, means that everybody is starting to say, "What am I benefiting from globalization?" Mm. And so, because in the past, in the last twenty years, the mantra was <laughs> globalization <laughs> equals good. <laughs> that somehow you're tied to more uh, markets, you're tied to more uh, cheaper manufacturing goods from China, right. in Walmart, that is all good. And so we have more money to spend and get more stuffs. Yes. Uh, but uh, you're correct that uh, we have become highly dependent, the U.S., on uh, cheaper labor, and, and, and which is also rising, as you know. Um, salaries in China, uh, Southeast Asia are, are rising, becoming their own consumer markets, and they want their own you know, things to buy also. So you're, you're correct that uh, that is a, a kind of a mantra that's no longer 100% uh, true. I think so. I think absolutely, Ray. I mean, people don't. I don't think people think that they're benefiting hmm. from global trade as much as they used to, or perhaps yeah. not. But but of course that uh, that is uh, a. a it kind of, uh, you can go back to the last election, <laughs> also the presidential election, America first. <laughs> that, that is a slogan that is about, a, a, if you go back in time, a mercantilist uh, yeah. kind of, uh, kind of uh, to, uh, to uh, beggar thy neighbor, you make your own you know, uh, protectionist state, a nation state, and others you, uh, sell very, uh, uh, you buy very little, but you sell as much as possible to the right. others. Right, yeah. right. Yeah, that's, that's, that, that, that's very true. I, I, I didn't really want to touch on any elections or anything like that, but uh, you're, you're absolutely right. But that's that you know the reason for some of these elections is that people don't feel particularly you know, that like benefiting. They they don't feel like they're they're moving on in life and they're moving backwards. So based on your like you said, you had time to meditate on your career yeah. about the uh, you know uh, like a <laughs> corner looking at, <laughs> at 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 the anatomy of uh, of finance and uh, industry. And, uh, and then you must have something to say to Hawaii uh, uh, based on your career about uh, what may happen or what, what areas uh, do, you, do you see as areas that Hawaii should really be concerned about well, for its own economy and, and citizens? Well, I try, you know, I don't really focus in on just Hawaii. I, I, I try to keep it a, a fairly general because what I try to do is just show how much more interconnected mm -hmm. The whole world has become, and that, that's why Hawaii, we, we living in Hawaii, need to know what's going on in the world. And the, as far as the financial aspect, we, we, I looked at 
sort of the, the shocks. There were things like, um, you know, geopolitical uh, right, shocks. Right. We had things like the uh, Gulf War. Right. And then we also had things that happened with financial imbalances. Sometimes um, that, um, you know, too much money went into one direction. Right, right. And then finally, when everybody decided to come out, then there was a big, you know, there was a huge reaction. And, you know, markets suffered. And because of that, markets, you know, went, went down and people's quality of life went down. But what you're saying is that uh, it may, something, <coughs> a shock or mm. uh, uh, an imbalance or, or uh, uh, something that affects the economy of Hawaii may come from somewhere that we didn't know it would come from there. <laughs> a, 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 you know, mm. Something that appears from nowhere or, or somewhere that we didn't know. But like interest rates, right now they're very low. What would make suddenly it go up again? Well, uh, the, a few things did happen. The, uh, when uh, President Trump was elected, they, uh, the whole market thought that he would uh, be able to uh, increase infrastructure spending and spend a lot of money, a lot of deficit spending. Right, right, so that right. would take that yeah. would you know mean more bonds are right, right. you know are, are supplied and take uh, interest rates up. But however. Right after that initial uh, spurt, right now interest rates are still very, very low. That's correct. Something that I, I, I point out in my talk is that there's actually places, not in the United right. States, there are places where interest rates are negative. <laughs> wow. It's minus yeah. interest rates. Yeah. And that's, uh, that, that, that's pretty scary. Right. In, in Japan, Japan there's. Japan, <laughs> yeah, right. And, and in, in, in Europe. Wow. And, you know, uh, something I point out is that um, if you take, there's about $100 trillion of bonds right. in the world. And uh, of that, 10 trillion, 10 percent, are actually trading at negative interest rates. So you give money to uh, buy a bond, but you get less money back at the end of 10 years. You are guaranteed <laughs> to lose money. <laughs> and but why would anybody do that? Well, there's, uh, yeah, that's, that's a very good question. Yeah. It's like you and I would not do it. Yeah. But there's, 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 you know, usually the people that have to buy it are the institute, the banks, right, right. the big institutions. They need to have it because they have so much. And you know, uh, it's, it's a risk thing. They have to place these uh, these, these bonds um, with the central bank. Uh, there's regulations, and so they figure that also, you know, I have a bunch of one others that uh, giving me a very high yield. And you know, if I have a negative yield, my whole portfolio oh. is okay. So there's there's various but that's called reasons. Hedging. hedging well, uh, hedging, yeah. yeah. But uh, in, in a lot of ways, it's just that you know they they do it because they they, they have to. Right. In a but lot it's of ways. Uh, but coming from a logical financial perspective, it's abnormal. It's abnormal. <laughs> yeah. um, but the other thing is that remember, not everybody just holds on to a bond right, until right. maturity. Right. They try to sell it. Yeah. So if I think that I can buy it at a minus interest rate <laughs> and then sell it to you for an even higher, right. you know. Lower interest rate, well, then I'm okay. I made money. But that's being very optimistic here. <laughs> well, exactly. If everybody thinks that, then yeah, we, we might have a problem. So, uh, going, getting back to Hawaii, uh, one of the areas that uh, you know uh, the government uh, must shore up is the pensions fund. Exactly. Uh, because you can't have a pension fund that loses money. Exactly. Uh, what any thoughts there? Yes, the exactly. Um, as I when I first gave this. Um, this presentation right before in my presentation I had said that the pension fund shortfall the amount that the that, that, that the that the state is short in the public uh, public employees um, uh, benefit you know the pension benefits was about nine nine point eight billion I believe and then right before I went and gave my talk I read in the, in the star advertiser that it was it gone up to twelve over twelve <laughs> billion dollars that's that's in one year right Right, right, and it could be even higher because pension funds they make they they, they, they make that uh, base that estimate based on an assumed interest right. rate or assumed um, investment right, return, right, right. which are quite high. It could yeah. be seven percent, something like That's that. That's very but high. It can <laughs> yeah. be right. Um, so that was my other point was that you know you you should know your, how interconnected you are because if something happens overseas, China, right. Europe, yeah. anywhere, and that slams the market, then those pension benefits, people are, you know, they're getting very low interest rates, right. and so they're reaching for yield, they're reaching, right. they're, they're taking on more risk. They say, I need to take more right. risk because I have to hit my, my target. And then if, the, if the, you know, the bond market takes a big hit and then stocks also go down, then your, you know, what your, 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 your investment returns are even lower. Then your, your shortfall is even bigger. What happens? 
then Hawaii has to raise taxes, cut benefits, or they won't have the money. You know, they have to, they have to put it into pen, the, to the pension system. So you don't have money to fund rail, right. for instance, or roads, right. education. Right, right. education. Or, or to give uh, the pensions uh, checks to the retirees. Exactly. That, that, that is a community that will be very, very, uh, very violently upset. Uh, yeah, upset at right. this. And so what do you do? It's right. very. Um, but you have yeah. a very good uh, point. You just said is that usually one, uh, you know, uh, in, uh, this uh, balancing out. But what <laughs> if, as you know, in in the trade, uh, there's a black swan, when suddenly everything goes down. Yes. You know, uh, yeah. currencies, bonds, stocks, oil. I mean, everything just goes down, mm. and you hedged <laughs> everything that something will will be up there. But suddenly, it, it, it's a complete. Mm. Uh, 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 decline in, ev yes. in every market, yes. and that's the black swan. And these ha has has those types of uh, actions happened in the past. They have happened, um, but one thing I, I, that I've that I've researched was that there's two types of financial shocks. As I, I think I mentioned before, the geopolitical ones. Um, you know, Iraq. Right, you know, right, right. invades Kuwait. Right, so right, right. all of a sudden, everybody. <laughs> oh no 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 no. no, no, no. But uh, and then there's other ones like the financial imbalances, like um, it's like Latin American right, debt right, crisis, right, right, uh, right, or yeah. or even like the great financial crisis of 2008, the right. housing crisis. Right. Now, what the difference between those two is that one is the ge the geopolitical ones tend to have a big shock to the right. system, so the market goes down. Right. But then most of the time, yeah, yeah, they, within a short yeah, period of time, yeah, right, it right, comes right back, back up. Yeah, Whereas the financial imbalances yeah, yeah. take a long oh. time to heal. We're still recovering wow. from the uh, from the great financial crisis wow. of 2008. And that's that's wow, that's almost uh, 10 years ago, yes. a decade ago yes. when you think about it. Yes, yeah. that's right. And that's another reason why these interest rates are very very low. Oh. They had to bring interest rates yeah. down because yeah. they think that's what we need to do to improve right. the economy. Mm -hmm. And they're just getting to the, to the time of saying, well, maybe the economy's healthy enough that we can mm. start doing something about it. But who knows what's going to happen? Well, we're going to end on this uh -huh. mysterious note <laughs> for our viewers. <laughs> because uh, I think, H.O., you gave us a very insightful view of the markets based on your 30-year-plus career in many uh, global uh, capitals. And uh, I hope to see you again in a few months to give another insight to what's happening uh, to the economy and uh, whether uh, there's bad things out on the horizon or um, we're, we're holding steady. Thank you again. This is Think Asia. My name is Ray Tsuchiyama, and thank you very much.